Hi, I'm Bob with LPS Computer. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, error code 8601 and the DesignJet 500-800 family of, of, of plotters. Um, the video is going to be mainly addressing uh, 8601s that have been that, that are still present after a belt has been replaced. I'm going to cover about 10 or 11 items that can cause an 8601. By, by far the most common cause of an 8601 is a worn out belt. But I think that's pretty well known uh, out, out there in the design jet community. So if you've changed out the belt and you still have an 8601, you're probably going to want to watch this all the way to the end. Uh, I'm not covering these in, in, in the order of frequency, but rather uh, in the order that kind of makes sense as we film this. If you uh, don't haven't installed an LPS belt or an HP belt, uh, then the problem may still be the belt. Uh, not to be too disparaging, but the quality control from the imported belts isn't that good. And uh, almost daily we hear about people, people call me and ask me what the, why they still have a problem if they haven't installed uh, an LPS belt or one of uh, HP's belts. I'm really not that interested in talking to them because the, the, the length of the belt varies. The, uh, the teeth spacing and so on is not all that consistent on the imports. So uh, we could just be chasing our tails. So um, my advice would be get an LPS belt, which has a lifetime warranty. They're the best belts in the world by far, and they will not wear out. Uh, if you want the specifications on the belt, you can watch uh, another one of our videos where we actually go into the belt replacement for the Design Jet uh, 500 800. So it's mostly those people I'm talking to that, that have replaced the belt, an LPS belt, and are still seeing an 8601. So I'm going to talk about the reasons that happens. Uh, it could be a, a one of uh, several common mistakes. Uh, made uh, while putting in the belt. The most common one, is, or a common mistake, is uh, getting the belt into the carriage, uh, attaching it at the wrong place. Now you'll see here that the teeth portion of the belt goes toward the motor pulley, and on the other side of this, it's the ribbed portion of the belt and goes to the tensioner pulley. This is the correct way. If you've got teeth coming out this side or ribs coming out this side and then the transition point uh, is somewhere other than right here, transition from uh, t teeth to, uh, to ribs, it's in incorrectly. It's also possible to get it in upside down. So the, the, uh, the ribs are going toward the, the motor pulley and the teeth toward the uh, tensioner pulley. And that will definitely cause uh, an 8601 issue. Another problem can be that the encoder strip signals aren't getting back to the uh, electronics module reliably. And that would be because this is the cable from the uh, encoder sensor, which is right here. The uh, signal goes back to the electronics through the tra uh, trailing cable. So you'd want to check to make sure these those are in nice and square. And sometimes when the encoder strip, I'm sorry, when the trailing cable is put in, uh, it gets damaged. So you, you want to be very careful putting it in and make sure it goes in uh, nice and square when you put it in. That's another cause of uh, uh, 8601 after a belt replacement. And there's one other thing I'd like to talk about while I've got this carriage here and that is the front carriage bushings. These are held in by one screw on each side and they will slide out. You'll notice that the front of this bushing is thinner than the back of the bushing. Some people want to take the carriage out by removing these and that can be done, but uh, putting these back in while the carriage is in the machine is almost impossible. They'll go in, but they'll, they'll go in backwards, and then the carriage height will be off. The general rule is don't ever, ever, ever take these out. It's not necessary. 
And if you do that, you're probably going to have more trouble than you really want. You'll end up going back. You, you can put these back in by taking them the carriage out of them with the carriage out of the machine and put them back in correctly, but you still have to use the instructions either from the manual or from our uh, video. I recommend the video because there's a lot of shortcuts there. It'll save you a lot of time and some problems. Uh, just one more thing about the carriage. This doesn't really uh, have anything to do with 8601, but the rear carriage bushing uh, goes on the back of the carriage right here, and this is what the bushing looks like. And uh, these frequently get dislocated or broken, uh, but it's not a big deal. You do have to take the carriage out to put it back in. You notice these two rectangles here. Well, either end of this bushing, uh, ha they have different widths, so you can't put it in backwards. You put one side in, and then snap the other side in, and that's all there is to that bushing. But it is very important. If that's missing, the carriage would rotate too far forward, the carriage height would be off, the flight time from the ink to the paper would be off, and your print quality is really bad. You also hear it hitting stuff as it's moving along, but it generally doesn't create an 8601. And I think that's all I have to say about the carriage itself for now. A lot of times uh, when you're trying to troubleshoot this sort of a problem, it's useful to watch the carriage, see what it's doing. So you may want to defeat the interlock switch right here. There's a finger right here that goes in this hole, presses down on this, tells the printer that they, the lid's closed. Well, we're going to lie to the printer. We're going to slip a watered up piece of paper in there, make it think that the lid's closed. Now the machine will run with the, uh, the lid open. Uh, when it's running like that, uh, don't stick your hands in there. Just uh, use a little sense and uh, don't call me up and tell me you got bruised fingers. A, a common error uh, when you're putting in the, the, uh, a, a belt after a belt installation is that the carriage will go through its startup routine and, and go all the way back and it'll come out to about this position, put up an 8601. That's caused by the wrong belt tension. The belt tension is managed by a spring that is part of the belt tension assembly. We're going to look at that. Let's get some light. This is the belt tension assembly here. Now, this is latched down. That creates slack. On, that compresses the tensioner spring, which creates slack in the belt so that it can fit over the motor pulley. But you can see these barbs here on the bottom of this wedge piece are still holding on. So I'm going to use a dual screwdriver to undo those. Now the belt's nice and tight again. And if we look at it, It's not guitar string tight, but it's, it should look like that. So now we should have nice smooth motion here on the carriage, but there you can see there's some hesitation. There's still a problem with this machine, which brings us to the next uh, thing we want to look at, and that is uh, the motor pulley itself. A lot of times when an older belt disintegrates, which ours won't because we have antioxidants, antioxidants in it. When it disintegrates, a lot of the material stays in the teeth of the motor pulley. This, uh, I'm going to take the tension off this belt again, and um, we're going to take a look at that motor pulley. So I've clipped that down, and I'm going to slip this off. Oh, what do you know? There's debris in there. Well, that'll cause jerkiness in the carriage motion. So what I usually do is just take a jeweler's screwdriver and clean all the teeth out on this. And I follow it up with a wire brush to pick up anything uh, that the uh, jeweler's screwdriver has missed. So you want this completely free of debris. Otherwise, when these teeth, these teeth match uh, the teeth on the motor puller pulley perfectly. 
So if there's anything in there, there's no room uh, for anything to happen except for it to jerk a little bit. And that's enough to generate an 8601. So you always want to make sure the motor pulley is clean. We're going to skip the wire brush part for now. I'm going to unlatch the tensioner once again. See if we can find anything else wrong with this. Okay, when an 8601 comes up, it's caused primarily by one of two things. One is that the uh, something has inhibited the carriage motion, causing the motor to drive harder. That will raise the current on the on the motor, and that triggers an 8601. So you need mechanical freedom on the carriage or you get an 8601. The other thing that will cause it is if the sensing for the carriage motion is sending back false information. This is the encoder strip right here. This has lines printed on the back of it, 300 of them per inch. And the, the, the encoder strip that I mentioned a few minutes ago straddles that. And the, it emits light on one side and receives, uh, you know, watches those lines go by. Now, if there's a problem with the encoder strip, or, um, anything that's going to cause a problem with that sensor reading it, it's going to create an 8601. Basically a false paper jam or false motion error. There's a problem that is commonly induced when putting in the belt, and that is the encoder strip is out of position. The way you can tell if that's your problem is your, your carriage will be mostly to the right when you get the 8601. And if you watch carefully, you watch the encoder strip here, it's moving front to back as I move this. So that means it's actually hitting uh, the carriage is touching the sensor. Well, this needs to be centered in the sensor, otherwise it gets out of focus and the sensor can't see the lines clearly and it's going to lose track of it. Now, the reason that happens is because this bracket, which is the encoder strip bracket, it's right here. That's out of position. There's, there's a hole in this bracket, and that hole has to go over a peg in the, in the frame. And you'll see this is the bracket with a hole, and there's no peg in there, which means this is out of position. So I'm going to push this back. Didn't quite get there. I need a screwdriver to do that. Need something to push it. We have to get that hole over the peg. And that's not cooperating right very much. Let me do it a different way. And that usually just pops right in. But it's not popping very well for me right now. There. Now you'll see. It still doesn't look quite right. It fills the hole completely when it's in there correctly. There it is. Okay, now the encoder strip is in the correct position. And you'll see when I move the carriage over here again, the encoder strip doesn't move. It stays exactly what it's supposed to be. It's going through the center of the sensor. This is probably the most common problem that uh, people call about with an 8601 after a belt replacement. They always tell me, but I took it off from the other end, just like the video said. Yes, that's fine, that's good. But there's no tension on this when it's disconnected from the other end. And just by moving the machine around and bumping into it or whatever, it gets dislocated. Okay, another thing that can cause uh, 8601 errors 
is a damaged encoder strip. This is the encoder strip. You can't actually see the lines on there. It just looks like the plastic is translucent. Okay, the way I check that is to put a piece of paper behind the encoder strip with a light. If I can hold that with one hand, I can, you can look through the encoder strip and look for uh, places that are very dirty or it's damaged. Damage is usually in the shape of a, uh, a half moon where some of the lines have been rubbed off or they just wiped off or whatever. Anyway, you want to do this a section at a time and take a good look at it. Now, if, if it's dirty, clearly you want to clean it, but you only clean it with soft cloth and warm water, and then you do that very gently. Reason being, these lines are print, printed on the back side of the plastic and it doesn't take much to make them come off. So if you do find uh, something that's really covered, stained heavily with ink, or it is uh, damaged in some way, you're missing some lines, you have to replace the encoder strip to solve the problem. The service station can actually get mounted incorrectly. Now I go into that in some detail on the belt replacement procedure. That's pretty rare. That, that almost never happens. If you follow the instructions in the belt replacement video where we take the service station out and uh, in, in the process of taking the carriage out, uh, you see how to put it back in properly. So I'm not going to go through that again here. The last thing we want to look at is the cutter. The cutter is right here. It comes off very easily. And at times, you want to examine this. You'll see an 8601 during a cutting, uh, while it's trying to cut the paper, this one has a, a split O-ring, so it's not going to drive the cutter very well. And it's uh, pretty well worn. So if you see that kind of a situation, you're going to want to replace the cutter. Now here's one that has been rebuilt by LPS. You see we put all new tires on it, sharpen up the, uh, the cutter. We've got a machine to do that. And uh, it, it's basically as good as new. One last thing about the cutter is when we're putting it back in, because like, some people go like that and it's in. It's not in. You have to go like this. It has to be down so the front edge stays in this channel and it moves freely. And that's all I've got on this. So, that's about it from sunny Southern California for today. So, all I've got to say is live long and perspire. One last thing. Uh, people sometimes don't know quite what to do with the oil, little oil kit we send out uh, in our kits. Uh, it's real easy. This rail is what the carriage rides on, and we want to keep the friction on that as low as possible. So as long as it's clean, that's a good thing. So clean it, and then we're going to add some oil to the, uh, our little pad here. And then clean, not, not clean, we're just going to wipe that onto the rail and you just want a real thin film on there. That helps the carriage uh, move at a consistent rate all the time. And you should do that about once every six months. Okay.